talk today will be about the new technology to create monolayers out of organic semiconductors. This technology works under ambient conditions and is termed organic solid solid wetting deposition or in short OSWD. Okay, then this one. Um, well, I will start with a brief introduction into the solid solid wetting effect. Then I will talk about, of course, of the organic solid solid wetting deposition. Um, I will go into detail of the topic of my PhD, which is actually the role of the dispersing agent for the whole OSWT process. And then I will end up with a few possible prospective applications of our technology. So, well, let's start with the OSWT, uh, with the solid solid wetting. So, um, in the 1980s, um, Mr. Harbour was the first one who presented a model of an effect he's seen, he could not explain. So what Mr. Harbour did was he took anorganic catalysts, put them on different substrates, and heated both up to temperatures higher than 450 degrees. And then he found that at that temperatures, monolayer were built up. And actually he couldn't explain how these monolayers were built because at that temperature, these anorganic catalysts neither melt nor vaporize. And then, well, in the end, he presented a model where he said, um, these catalysts, they seem to build up a monolayer like a liquid would wet the surface. But of course, with these catalysts being not a liquid, but a solid body. So about 20 years later, um, the head of our department took this effect and did a bit of advancement and tried to establish the technology. And he ended up with something he termed organic solid solid wetting deposition. So let's talk about it. Um, well, what he and what now I'm doing is we take organic semiconductors. For example, here you can see um, gamma quinacridone. It's a really strong color, it's a really strong pigment, and also it's organic semiconductor. And um, well, you can see here in the middle that uh, gamma quinacridone builds so um, ball-formed nanocrystals. And okay, on the right side, you can see um, the, the chemical structure. So we take this organic semiconductors, we put them in different dispersing agents, we create a dispersion, then put a few drops of this dispersion on uh, different substrates, mainly on graphite, and then immediately monolayers are built up. Monolayers, like you can see them here. So again, on the right side, you can see an SDM picture of such a monolayer. Um, on the left side, you can see a computer model of how the single quinacridone molecules form domains and monolayers. And down below, you can see a close-up view. So, well, let's sum up this thing. So, um, the OSVD process works under ambient conditions. Um, we are able to use organic semiconductors, which means that our technology is really cheap. Organic semiconductors, they are used as pigments, for example, in the car industry, and they are really low cost. Um, we don't have to solve our um, pigments, so that's really the key point of this technology. Um, our technology works under ambient conditions, but we don't have to solve our organic semiconductors. And well, finally, we are on the one hand um, able to direct the growth of these monolayers, and on the other hand, we are able to rework the monolayers and domains afterwards, after they have been assembled. So well, when I started when I started my PhD, um, uh, the key question was, okay, we do need a dispersing agent, but we don't know what the dispersing agent does. So if you take the pure powder and put it on um, graphite, under ambient condition, then just nothing happens. And when you take the semiconductors and you put them into different dispersion agents and you drop this dispersion on the graphite, then immediately monolayers are built up. But actually nobody could explain what does this person do or what does this dispersion agent do. So, well, this was the point where I started my experiments. Actually, I took a lot of different dispersion agents, um, put always the same semiconductor in it, always gamma quinacridone, and tried to build a lot of uh, monolayers. And finally, I was able to classify my different samples in three classes. The first one, there are two examples here now, um, is the class of samples where you create a really huge surface coverage of the semiconductor. Um, so what you can see is that um, OSVD, OSWD does not build up a complete homogeneous monolayer. It builds up such kind of um, domains. 
And what you can see is on the one hand, we are able to create monolayers out of organic liquids like propylene carbonate. And we are also able to build up monolayers out of water. Here in that case, um, we've shifted water into a more basic region by use of KO KOH. Um, so let's switch to the second class. The second class, stop, wrong button. Um, the second class I established was um, the, there belong samples to it, um, which have a much lower coverage rate, as you can see here. And also, you've seen before that the domains were built up have a really dense structure. And here now you see much more space between the single quinacridone strings. But still, all around the sample, there's a lot of um, coverage. So what you can see again here on the right side, water. So if you have a water of a pH of around seven, then you have a much lower coverage rate, but still you build up um, quinacridone domains. Um, at that point, one idea was that it might be that uh, the coverage rate of the monolayers might relate to the chemical structure of the dispersing agent. So you can see here that ethyl benzene has no active groups where propylene carbonate, for example, has um, three oxygens. So then I did a lot more tests and ended up with the, the third class. And that's the class of samples I found where we have really no demands build up. So um, on the right side, dodecane does just build nothing. Um, on the left side, dimethyl sulfoxide does not um, build up quinacridone domains. You just have this single strings somewhere. And as you can see, Dodecan has again no active side groups like ethyl benzene. But ethyl benzene builds up a uh, coverage rate of about 50%. Dodecan does build up just nothing. And then you have the methyl sulfoxide, which has one oxygen, but you again see really no monolayers. So, well, uh, to sum up these results, we have seen now uh, by choosing different dispersing agents, you create really completely different coverage rates, you, uh, you create different types of domains, domains with different structures, some of them are more dense, some of them are not so dense. But at that point, uh, we could not explain what is well, the key role of dispersing agent. So which dispersing agent creates a really huge coverage rate and which don't. So we did a lot of tests and well, it's not the chemical structure. We compared other properties like viscosity, vapor pressure, surface tension, permittivity. We actually could never found the relationship between the property of the dispersing agent and our coverage rate. And then we did a lot more tests and well, finally we found that when you disperse your semiconductor in the dispersing agent, then the single crystals gain a setup potential. And so these are now the six uh, examples I've brought. Um, the more, the stronger negative the setup potential of the dispersed semiconductor is, the higher is the coverage rate. Now here you can see just the six examples I have shown, the SDM pictures. We have actually tested about 15 different dispersing agents and where always you see this relationship. So when the nanocrystals dispersed in the dispersing agent have a high negative setup potential, then you get a high coverage rate. And the lower negative the setup potential is, um, well, the lower is the coverage rate, up to a high positive setup potential, for example, dodecane, where you just see nothing. No semiconductor on top of the graphite structure. So, well, finally, we, we tried to summarize all these results and to create a model out of it, um, a bit according to the model of the solid-solid wetting from the 1980s. So what you think at the moment is that the nanocrystals, again, they gain a setup potential when you disperse them in a dispersing agent. Um, this setup potential seems somehow to adjust the surface free energy and the more negative the setup potential is, the higher is the surface coverage rate of the built up monolayers. Um, so the model says, okay, we, get, we disperse our nanocrystals, they gain a setup potential, then they are absorbed by um, the substrate surface, in our case, mainly by graphite. And then when the attractive forces from the adsorbed nanocrystal to the surface is higher than the binding forces within the nanocrystal, then single molecules can leave the adsorbed nanocrystal, migrate to the graphite substrate, and then start a self-assembly process and start to build up a monolayer. So, um, well, a bit 
future outlook. Um, future outlook. So what might be possible in the future uh, is band gap engineering. Actually, it's known that when you take a sheet of graphene and you put a monolayer of an organic semiconductor on top of it, then you induce a band gap in the graphene sheet. And this band gap is related on the one hand on the structure of the organic semiconductor and on the other hand on the direction of the um, semiconductor domain on top of the graphene sheet. So actually, as I've shown, we are able to change the structure of our semiconductor domains by choosing different dispersing agents. We are also able to change the structure and the direction by using different tools the STM offers, for example, pulsing or choosing different biases. And so in the future, we might be able to do band gap engineering and to really create a specified band gap we want to have. What else might be possible is some kind of sandwich structures. So what we're trying at the moment is to take a um, sheet of graphene, put a monolayer of organic semiconductor on top of it, then put another sheet of graphene on it, and then take the next semiconductor. But at the moment, we are able to create monolayers out of, I think, 20 different semiconductors. So such sandwich um, systems might really be possible. What you can do right at the moment is to create, we call double layers. So what you can see here is um, a graphite on the floor, the surface, and then two layers of a graphene monolayer on top of each other. So well, that's it. Thank you for your attention. Uh, what I will give to you is a take home message. So what I wanted to show is that our OSV, OSWD process is able to create monolayers uh, under ambient conditions which makes a quite cheap process. And again, we are able to um, change the structure by a lot of different tools of our monolayers. Okay, that's it, thank you. Thank you.